Hello, this is West Virginia Tim. This isn't the final location for this cache. I just have it sitting here attached to this tree at my house just for illustrative purposes. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build, how to find, and how to build two gadget caches. Reason I'm doing two on the same video, they're so simple and straightforward, but they're also pretty unique. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to build two. The first one we're gonna take you to is called Hidden Treasures Woods. This is at the Woods Resort. So let's run over to the Woods Resort, look at how to fi find and build that one, and then I'll bring you back here to the house and we'll talk about this one. I'm at Hidden Treasures in the Woods. The landowner selected this location, marked it on the map. This is where they wanted to cache. So as I looked around the area, there's very few places to hide a traditional cache. So this is one of those places that just begs a, a, a birdhouse. I didn't want to do anything, too, you know, too elaborate. Didn't have time to make anything, you know, really hard to solve. So I made a very, very simple cache. When you walk up to this cache, you can look at it and you go, well, you know, it's the geocache because, you know, it's not a birdhouse. It looks like a birdhouse. But if you look underneath it, it's got a lock and it's got a, a clasp and you can see a preform tube. So, you know that you're going to need to be able to open that lock and the lock needs four digits. So I'm going to show you the bottom. So there's a lock under that hasp and there's a lock that takes four digits. So I love red herrings. I never want the first thing the cacher to do is the thing that solves the cache. So I want to always have a diversion. So on the cache page, this is the very first time I've done this. On the cache page, it says uh, the geocache. It says this simple geocache won't be hard to solve. It says, reminds me, one time, one ate two apples before trying to solve a gadget cache. It worked. Maybe you should try it. There's my red herring. Because when they read it, it says one time. Instead of saying I, I said one, that's kind of a hint. So now you've got one, one, eight, eight, two apples. So now I want the geocacher to think one, one, eight, two. And then th th they'll try to put one, one, eight, two in the lock. But you know what? It's not going to open. So now they've tried one, one, eight, two. There's no other numbers. There's nothing there. How do you solve it? So let me show you the secret of this geocache. It looks like it's attached here. It's got four black screws. That's why I painted this black. It's kind of color coded, but really it's very simple. All they do is grab the front of the cache. It's got some very strong magnets. You pull it off and there's your cache. There's your log. And I've got a little, a little space here for trackables. So there's the inside of the cache. Uh, it's really not a preform tube. It's really just a, a, a lid that's glued on down there, and the cash pay, the cash log is right here, and I have a small container for trackables. The key to this cache is the magnets, and if you look, if you take a close look right here, there's a magnet here, there's a magnet up here, and there's a magnet over here, and there's a magnet here. And then what I've done on the other side is I've just put washers, four washers, and uh, I've put epoxy glue to put the washers in. So when I put it back on here, it stays nice and solid. So really, you're just building a square box, a very simple cash build. Uh, you're literally just putting four magnets in, four washers for the door to hold on, and it's as simple as that. The key, I think, are the magnets, and I use K and J magnets. You've seen me talk about them in some other videos. They sell a large variety of cylinder-style magnets. I always buy N52s. Because my wood is three quarters, I think I used a three-eighths inch diameter magnet about a half inch thick. But they have ten-pound pulls, so that's why this magnet is so strong. So. Uh, Literally, the expense of this cache is really just the four magnets because the magnets are about $2.50 a piece. So see how simple this is to build? Very simple. But because I made it flat, 
I did put a tin roof on it because I want to try to keep the weather from, from you know, um, destroying the top of my cache. So, unlike a typical bluebird house, I designed this nearly flat so that the top can come off easily. But doing, because I did that then, I put a piece of tin on the top to prevent it from weathering. Most of the weather that affects gadget caches, ones that are birdhouses, normally start from the top down. So I put a piece of tin up here and caulked it really, really well. Of course, it's painted with two or three coats of paint. And I think this tin will take the rain and the snow and it will slow down the weathering process. So, unlike a typical bluebird house, I designed this nearly flat so that the top can come off easily. But doing, because I did that then, I put a piece of tin on the top to prevent it from weathering. Most of the weathering of a birdhouse geocache, uh, gadget cache, most of the weather that affects gadget caches, ones that are birdhouses, normally start from the top down. So I put a piece of tin up here and caulked it really, really well. Of course, it's painted with two or three coats of paint. And I think this tin will take the rain and the snow and it will slow down the weathering process. Okay, cache number two. This one's called Hidden Treasures Farming. It's actually going to be at one of our local farms. So this cache, if you'll notice, it's, I'm really proud of this paint job. I love this paint job. In fact, when you walk up to this, it's got two-tone paint. Uh, it's got this uh, splash painting. Uh, it's got a solid tin roof on it that uh, tin's actually wrapped around. Uh, I've actually got fiberglass up here on the top, fiberglass on the, on the sides. Uh, this cache will last for years, but it also looks good. And I take a lot of pride in my caches, and I want to cache her, even though this is a fairly simple cache to solve, I want the cashier when it walks when the cashier walks up to this cache to realize that I spent some time and effort. Now it probably took me a couple hours and coats and coats of paint to get it to look this nice. But now, when you walk up to this cache, I'm going to show you around it here in just a second. Um, but there is nothing on the side. Uh, there is a door here on the front. There's nothing on this side. There's nothing on the bottom. There's nothing on the top. Nothing on the back. Uh, so let's take a real quick, let me take the camera off. Let me take you a real quick tour around this cache. I love the paint job on this cache. You either have to um, uh, paint it before you put it together or you have to tape. You know, you have to, I primed the whole thing and then you can put it together, but then you have to put uh, tape here and tape here uh, so that the black doesn't fold onto the uh, white. Uh, but I love a two-tone cache. And when you walk up to it, it just shouts that, hey, the cash owner, cash owner took some time uh, to make this uh, cash, and there's nothing on the bottom. So we can walk all the way around, and there is nothing. Uh, there's nothing on the bottom, the sides, the top. So we know we've got to get in this. Now, how in the world do we get in that? Okay, I'm just going to cut right to the chase. Every one of my caches, I do a red herring. This is a very rare cache. I did not do a red herring. The first thing that you figure out how to solve it is the way to solve it. And so, um, as you can imagine, behind this is a gate latch. So if this is a gate latch, now you can't see it, but if this is a gate latch, then how would you open it? You're gonna have to lift the gate latch up. So I came up here on the top. These screws are all, um, uh, there's it there's a screw in here and then they have a nut i'm going to take you in the shop and show you how to build it but they all look exactly the same if you touch them and play with them nothing happens except for this one if you take this one and lift it i just heard something move and i heard heard the door open so that's how you open it so simply pull this door opens and it resets so here's a peek at the inside of the cache it's really very simple. Uh, we have here a, a gate latch that you just buy at your local hardware store. I have two hinges. You can tell they're reused. Uh, up here to top, um, I actually used a three-inch machine screw here. 
I used an 832 by three. Uh, and the reason I went with three inches, it gave me a plenty of room. Uh, I used, I, I first put a fishing wire between um, um, my bolt up here and uh, my gate latch. But after I pulled it uh, 40, 50 times, I ended up with getting a little play in it. So I went to a very, very light wire. Um, you, you probably don't need screws this long on the other locations, but I bought a package of four. Uh, this came with four, and so I just put them in there. So at the top, here's the heads of our uh, machine screws. Um, the little washers that are used, uh, you can buy these at any store that sells uh, tin roofing. I ended up just taking the uh, washer, this little teeny washer right here. I took it off and then put it under here. I'm going to paint these uh, washers black and I'm going to change this paint scheme up here so that because you can already see where I've played with it dozens and dozens of times. I've already affected the top up here. That's because this is a piece of tin. Of course, you wouldn't have to use tin, but I'm going to uh, do a multicolored paint job so maybe it doesn't uh, give away the fact that this is the one right here that you pull. Okay, today I've shown you two caches. Really fairly simple gadget caches to build, but still kind of fun and a little bit difficult uh, to solve. Um, so uh, take these ideas and make them your own. Uh, you're welcome to copy them. No need to give me, uh, ask permission or give me credit. Just copy it and let's just keep raising the geocaching bar by improving our game one geocache at a time. Hey, this is West Virginia Tim and thanks for watching.